in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings of peace and joy, dear sisters and brothers. We are on the sixth chapter of Gospel of St. John. As we said, the sixth chapter of St. John is the bread of life discourse, where Jesus teaches about the Holy Eucharist. We said last Sunday, everything in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, is about the Eucharist. We said again last Sunday, the multiplication of the bread was Jesus telling all of us, I can change the bread. After the multiplication of the bread, we read in the Gospel of St. John, Jesus walked on the sea. Jesus walked on the sea. Jesus walking on the sea again tells us, Jesus tells us that I can change myself. So these two propositions stands as an introduction to the Eucharist. Jesus says, I can change the bread, I can change myself. Now we come to the Gospel of the day. Today's Gospel passage is taken from the Gospel of St. John chapter 6 verses 25 to 35 where we have a beautiful conversation. I wish, if possible, open the Bible with me. Open the Bible, John chapter 6, verses 25 onwards. Let us travel through this Bible passage so that we get the depth of that passage. The passage begins with uh, the people searching for Jesus, a searching episode. They are, after the multiplication of the bread, they are searching for Jesus. In fact, as we read first, oh, it's very impressive. We, it, it sounds very impressive, but Jesus is not impressed by them. When the people, when the crowd found Jesus, listen what Jesus tells them. John chapter 6 verse 26, Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw signs, but because you yet your fill of the loaves, the Lord tells them straightforward, he who sees the heart, he saw their hearts and said, you are searching for me, not because you understood the signs, but because you ate the bread. Again, you want to have more bread. You have come not seeking me, but seeking bread. You have come seeking not me, but blessings. Before we judge the crowd, maybe it's good that we ask ourselves, is the Lord making the same complaint about us today? The why behind the what matters to the Lord. Why do I go for the Holy Mass? Why do I pray? Why do I attend retreats? Why do I spend time in spiritual matters? Is it because I want a blessing or is it because I love the Lord? Again, another question that would resound there is the question Jesus asked Peter at the Sea of Tiberius. Do you love me more than all this, more than the blessings that you received? Do you love me? So the Lord makes this complaint to the people. You are searching me not because you understood the signs but because you had stomach full. Then the Lord exhorts the people and all of us. He exhorts them to move from the spirit, from the material food, the food that perishes to the eternal food. Jesus encourages them move from the material world to the spiritual reality, from the food that perishes to the food that lasts for eternal life. Sisters and brothers, the Lord is inviting all of us search Him for to satisfy your soul, to strengthen your soul, not just for a material blessing, but for the for strengthening your soul, to find joy for the soul. When the, when the Lord encouraged them to move from this material reality to the spiritual reality, the, the, the Lord says this, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him has God the Father set his seal. Now the people ask a question. Listen to that question. They ask, they said to him, What must we do 
to be doing the works of God. What must, what must we do to get to do the works of God? What must we do to do the works of God? Maybe they expected Jesus would give like certain works of mercies, works of mercy which the book of the Lord narrates. But listen, what did Jesus say? Jesus gave a straightforward answer. Verse 29, Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. The work of God is simple. You believe in the one whom God has sent. Believe in me, the Lord is saying. Immediately, the crowd has the, the, the question. They asked, why should we believe in you? Can you show some signs by which we can believe in you? Then they caught, they say this, Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So they refer to Moses. They say, Moses gave our fathers bread to eat in the wilderness. What will you give as a sign so that we may believe in you? So Jesus immediately takes this, this biblical example which the people brought. He goes back to that event in the Old Testament which we heard in the first reading today when the Israelites cried out in their journey to the promised land in their hunger when they cried the Lord provided them with manna. The Lord says it is not Moses who gave them manna from heaven. It is my father. It was not Moses but my father who gave the manna from heaven. The Lord says truly truly I say to you it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. My father gives you true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives lives to the world. The bread of God is that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Lives to God's people. Again, another reference comes to our mind. The Lord's claim, I have come that you may have life and life in abundance. Jesus is that bread. He came down so that he can give life. So the people's response there is, they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Just as the Samaritan woman asked Jesus, give me that life-giving water. Here, as soon as they heard the bread, they said, Lord, give us that bread always. Give us the bread always. So now we have the stakes set for the bread of life discourse. Now Jesus takes this, this analogy of the bread and he tells verse 35, the last verse of today's gospel. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. The first I am statement of Jesus is there. I am the bread of life. He has already exhorted them move from this material reality to the spiritual reality. He has already told them move from the perishable food to the eternal food which will help you to reach eternal life. Now the Lord says, I am that bread of life. I am the living bread. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger. He who believes in me shall not thirst. My dear sisters and brothers, the Lord is telling us a spiritual reality. When we come to Him, when we receive Him, He satisfies the deepest longing of our soul. More than the body's thirst for drinks and body's hunger for food, our soul, our soul thirsts, our, our soul hungers. And who can satisfy? Only the bread of life. Jesus, the bread of life. We read in the Gospel of Sin, Matthew chapter 15, verse 32, the Lord tells, I do not want to send them away hungry lest they may faint on the way. The Lord has compassion. The Lord says, if I send them away hungry, they will faint on the way. And he feeds them. 
he multiplies the bread and feeds them my dear sisters and brothers if ever you have this question why did jesus institute the holy eucharist the sacrament of the holy eucharist the reason is there jesus felt compassion for the people that if he sends them away hungry they will fall on the way the lord says i do not want you to fall on your journey to eternal life just as the old testament people were travelers and on their journey from the slavery to the promised land lord gave them manna so that they can reach the promised land and manna was given until the day they reached the promised land the lord says we the new testament people we are also travelers we are not traveling to a land flowing with milk and honey then we are still in the old testament if the aim of our christian life is some material blessings a land flowing with milk and honey we have not met with the, with the jesus with the jesus who came we are still in the old testament if we are new testament people our travel is towards eternal life heaven in our journey to heaven we should not fall fainted so he gives us his body as our food his blood as our drink and he says i am the bread of life he who comes to me shall not hunger he who believes in me shall not thirst he satisfies the hunger and thirst of our soul by giving us his body and his blood as our food and drink dear sisters and brothers as we reflect this passage today yes we are going to continue to reflect the longer passage the next following two weeks more let us ask two three questions to ourselves in the life of the gospel today why do i go for the holy mass do i go to fulfill an obligation do i go to fulfill to get do i go to get some material benefits or do i go because i love jesus because i want to i want to receive him because i want to be nourished by him let us have a higher motivation let us not go with an inferior motivation but let us go with the, the higher motivation of receiving jesus jesus always sees our heart if our motivation is pure and holy their blessings will come secondly the lord says that he is the bread of life there is life in this bread eucharist is a person eucharist is not a thing eucharist is a person as the catholic church beautifully teaches us eucharist is a source and summit of christian life let us go to him to receive life for our soul so that we be nourished in this earthly life to reach heaven which is our eternal home amen god bless you dear friends divine spark youtube channel is the humble effort of satyagiri dominican retreat house to preach and teach god's word far and wide if you are watching this channel and if you have been blessed by this channel we request you to share the good news with others by sharing our youtube videos our sunday sharing with your friends with your family in your parish in your friend circle god bless you